Now let's talk about macro do loops. So suppose I wanted five different lines of, of a title in my um, printout. So I could run this data title, and I've got this x variable. And I want to print it out with five lines of title. Well, that's getting a little bit ridiculous. So instead of doing line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, I could just use this cute little macro that'll just run all five titles at once. Um, so a couple things to notice are, one, the do has to start with a percent sign again, just like everything else that we're working with in macros, just like we have percent signs at the mend and at the macro. We need percent signs at the do loops and at the two. So the do, the to, and the end all need percent signs in front of them. Now, this is not to be confused with um, a regular do loop that has to go inside of a data step. Now we can do do loops inside procedures. We haven't been able to do that before, but now we can. Um, so this is just kind of a little bit cute um, way of doing this. And, and um, so when you run this procedure, you're just going to do this this way. So it runs these five titles through here. Um, here's another example. So suppose I have two files, file 1 and file 2, and I want to put them together. The old method was to say set file 1, file 2, and then run that. OK, that's great. But suppose you had 200 files. You don't want to sit there writing file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4 over and over again. So instead of doing that, you can run a macro do loop. Don't be confused. This is not the same thing as a regular do loop again. Um, part of what we're doing is we're using this macro variable, the macro i variable that we created up here in the do loop. Um, that's not just a regular i. So we can use that macro variable, remember, as the end of our variable name or the end of our data set name. That's what we're doing right here. We conveniently set up the names of these data sets to be file 1 and file 2 so we can run this do loop. It makes things a little bit easier for us. Um, so when we combine these two things, yes, we're making it a little bit more complicated than we need to for a data set with only two things in it. You can see down here at the bottom. Um, but on the other hand, like I said, if you had 200 of these, it would be simpler. Here's an example of a macro where you have just a, a regular do loop, but it's a regular do loop inside of a macro. So don't get too confused. I am using macro variables in this regular do loop. Um, so don't let it confuse yourself. I'm going to go, I'm going to start the do loop at the lower limit and go to the upper limit by some width, say 1 or 0.01. I've defined it down here. Um, and then I'm going to just create this plot of negative x squared plus 1 and then output these things and then I can again join them and create this nice curve thing. Um, so that's basically the idea of the plot. I just wanted to show you the difference between regular do loops and macro do loops. Macro do loops always need those percent signs. A couple more things to note about do loops are that the macro do loops are not valid in open code. In other words, unlike the let statement, the macro do loops have to be inside of a macro. Um, so you do have to define that macro and then call it later. Also, you can only run these do loops from positive and negative integers to positive and negative integers by positive and negative integers. So you can, you're a little bit more limited in what you can do. You can't run it from i equals 1 to 5 by 0.01, say.